right, here we are. Last video of the muscle system in the Mr. Thompson lecture series. This time around, we're going to be talking about the actual muscles, putting the names to the actual muscles. So biceps, triceps, quads, that sort of thing. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, different types of muscles, uh, different types of movements, similar to what you had talked about. Actually, not similar, exactly what you had talked about with the um, joints web quest so this will be a nice refresher for you um, when you're talking about how your joints move i'm going to talk a little bit about um, other ways that we name muscles based on their shape what they do that sort of thing um, and so i guess let's just get right to it let's talk about the anger the fury the muscles All right, so let's talk about the actual anatomy of the muscle system, okay? And I, I may um, have a little bit of some visual aids to sort of help us out with that. Uh, we'll see how well it goes. Um, maybe help us remember things a little bit more, uh, which always is helpful, right? So we're talking about the muscle system, right? Um, it's when we talk about the muscular system, we're only talking about skeletal muscle. So you remember there were actually three types of muscle tissue, right? The other two being cardiac and smooth. So when we talk about the muscle system and muscles and like with your joints and stuff like that, we're only talking about skeletal muscles. Um, how they're organized changes uh, range of motion, power and speed. And so you remember back in the muscle physiology video, we talked about uh, fascicles, right? So bundles of muscle fibers. So how we're arranging those fascicles um, has a lot of contributions to how the muscle is moving and stuff like that. And so there's a number of different arrangements, ways that we can bundle up those fascicles. Um, and so the patterns that we have are parallel, convergent, pennate, circular. So this first one is uh, parallel muscles. And parallel muscles have fascicles that are parallel to the long axis. And so when we're talking about the long axis, we're talking about uh, this way, basically, from superior to inferior, okay? Um, a lot of these muscles are flat but not all of them. Um, the muscles that are cylindrical have a central portion, um, also called a belly. And so if you look at the A right here, we're talking about uh, this part right here. And so this middle part is called the belly. So like your uh, forearm muscle right here. So it would be this section right here. Um, tension is dependent upon the total number of myofibrils. Uh, another type of parallel muscle are your um, the abs, so like your rectus abdominis, and that's going to get into naming stuff. Rectus has to do with the parallel muscles. Um, that is these right here. Their fascicles are still parallel. They just have bands of connective tissue in between them. We've also got um, we've got muscles that wrap around. Um, structures. So the supinator is a muscle in your arm that's responsible for going, um, rotating your arm like this. Okay. Uh, still parallel. You can see, even though it's wrapped around, you can see those uh, fascicles are parallel to each other. We've got convergent muscles. And so basically, um, I, when I look at this, I think of like uh, oyster shells or scallop shells or something like that. Okay. So the muscle fibers at one end are spread out like a fan right here, and then they uh, converge to a single attachment site. So here's your attachment site, the tendon. So for example, this is one of your uh, pectoral muscles. Uh, the uh, tendon may pull, so the muscle may pull on a tendon, like here. Uh, a uh, aponeurosis, which is a thin sheet of connective tissue, you'd find, like an example, you would find that is in the the, your scalp right here, uh, or something called a raphe, which is just a slender band of collagen fibers. The fibers will actually pull in different directions based on the activity that you're doing. 
We've also got uh, pennate muscles. So the fibers are actually at an angle relative to the tendon. Com um, the tendons don't move as far when compared to parallel or pennate muscles. They have more myofibrils, so they have greater tension, or at least they can develop more tension. And so here's a couple of examples, and you can see right here, um, here's the tendon down here for the uh, extensor digitorum. That's one of the muscles that's in your forearm right here that's responsible for uh, finger movement. I believe it's the one that lets you uh, extend your fingers. Okay. And you can see uh, pennant has to do with flag. And so they kind of fan out like a flag, but if you notice they're at an angle um, to the muscles. And you can also have some like in your, uh, uh, the muscles in your upper leg right here, they're still coming out at an angle this direction. Um, this example, so you can classify them based on the direction that they do. So one direction, E, is unit pennant. Two directions, or two angles, is bi pennant. And then um, multi pennant, so they're kind of going off at, at multiple directions, would be an example of your deltoid, which is a muscle, is your shoulder muscle, basically. This one, uh, this one right here, okay? Uh, circular muscles are named because they are circular, and typically those are um, act as your sphincters. Basically, these are valves in urinary and digestive tracts. Um, they also surround openings in the body. So you've got uh, three uh, circular muscles. Two, actually, one of them is a paired muscle, so you have two of that particular muscle. Um, around your eyes right here that is responsible for closing and opening your eyes, and around your mouth right here that's responsible for... Mm. opening and closing uh, your lips. Okay, so we want to talk about uh, origin and insertion. So when you're going to be studying muscles, you're going to study the origin and the insertion. Uh, the origin, these are attachment points, okay? So the fixed point of attachment is the origin, okay? The insertion is the movable point of attachment, okay? So it looks like this, right? Um, all right, I've got a muscle right here, okay? Here's my biceps brachii. Biceps brachii attaches to the uh, ulna just distal to the actual elbow joint, so about here-ish, okay? And the job of the biceps brachii is to um, flex your arm and pull it in this way, okay? And so it attaches here, and when you have apply tension to the muscle and it shortens, it's gonna move this bone right here. Now, in order to make sure that all of the movement takes place right here, it attaches to your uh, shoulder right here. And so when the muscle moves, this is the part that moves, not this part, okay? So the origin is right here, the insertion is right here. Typically, the origin, the origin is proximal to the insertion. Um, different actions, different ways that muscles move. We kind of talked, you kind of looked at some of those already uh, when you did the web quest. Um, these are just simply muscle movements by muscle contraction. Adduction, abduction, elevation, pronation, supination, all of those words that you looked at, right? Um, these are typically t uh, described in terms of what they do to the bone or the joint. So if, for example, the fle flexion of the forearm um, is flexion is bringing it closer to the body like this of the forearm. So as this muscle contracts, it's bringing the forearm over here or at the elbow. And so basically here's your pivot point. Uh, muscle interactions, so what we'll find is muscles works in groups to maximize efficiency. Um, you'll typically have major muscle, major muscles that are responsible for, for something, but then you'll have smaller muscles that help. Typically, the smaller muscles are going to reach maximum tension first to sort of get it started, and then the larger muscle will follow. Uh, we've got four terms that refer to how different muscles work together. Those are agonist, antagonist, synergist, and fixator.
Okay, so let's look at those in a little bit greater detail, all right? An agonist, also known as a prime mover, is uh, mostly responsible for mo a, producing a particular movement, flexion, adduction, that sort of thing. An antagonist opposes the movement of an agonist. So I'll give you an example. Biceps brachii um, is the prime mover for flexion of your arm, okay? Your triceps are uh, an antagonist because their primary function is extension, okay? And so as this muscle flex to extend your arm, this muscle relaxes, and then vice versa. As you flex, this muscle relaxes. You've also got synergis, which uh, is a smaller muscle that is going to move in the same motion as a larger muscle, so they're going to help each other out. And then a fixator is a synergist that assists an agonist, a prime mover, by preventing movement in another joint. So you can kind of think of these as stabilizer muscles. They're going to keep the joint from moving in ways it's not supposed to work. Uh, you'll see some of those in um, the wrist, for example. Uh, for those of y'all, if y'all have any joints where y'all are doing the wrist or the hand or something like that, uh, you'll have muscles that stabilize the joint, basically. Um, like agonists and antagonists, I kind of already said that, they work in pairs. So when one stretches, the other contracts and vice versa. Flexors, extensors, um, like in your arm, adductors and abductors in your shoulder and your hips are examples of uh, um, muscles that oppose each other but work together in the overall movement of the joint. Okay, so um, naming muscles, it... It sounds really complicated at first. It's not necessarily really complicated. There's 700 muscles in the human body. Um, the names of the muscles typically uh, include a descriptive information about where in the body you find it, the position, the direction, or the fascicle arrangement, the structural characteristics, and the action. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to have coming up next is a number of uh, different ways that words that we use to describe these bodies and the region or the action or whatever associated with those or the fascicle arrangement or something like that. Like your obliques in your ab, your, your abs that are on the side, right? They're called that because of the fascicle arrangement. Um, so specific regions of the body, some of these you already talked about and we looked at way at the very beginning of the school year. So you got to dig that stuff up. Um, look at the anatomical position vocabulary that we did. Very first thing, we were legit talking about anatomy stuff. Okay, so we've got abdominal, referring to the abdomen. Acon is referring to the elbow. Our auricular, related to the ear, the muscles that can move the ear. Brachial, related to arm. Capitus is head. Carpi is wrist. And cervicus is neck. Um, terms, all other terms indicating the specific regions of the body are uh, coccygeal, which is coccyx, so down by your tailbone, costal, which is ribs, right here. Um, it's kind of hard to see right now because I've just, I've, I've laid myself bare to y'all right now, but you're kind of missing some of the other parts, so just, you know, use your imagination. Cutaneous is skin, femoris is thigh, Glossal is tongue, hallux is the big toe or the great toe, ilium is groin, and inguinal is uh, also groin, slightly different part. Uh, if you know anybody who's ever gotten an inguinal hernia, it's sort of that region right there. Ilium is, um, would be farther down and anterior, uh, mostly referring to uh, that part of the pelvis. Uh, other regions, we've got lumbar, which is lower back nasalis, which is nose, nuchal, which is back of the neck, ocular is eye, oris is mouth, palpebra is your eyelid, pollux is thumb, popliteal is the is posterior to the knee, so the back of the knee, basically, uh, psoas, psoas is uh, loin area, having to do with your hips, We've got radial, which is forearm, scapular, which is the scapula, temporal, which is the temple, thoracic is the thorax, tibial is the tibia or the shin, basically, the ulnar is the ulna, um, and that's regions, okay? Uh, maybe pause, backtrack a little bit, and jot those down as we go, copy and paste them from my 
um, lecture slides that I have attached in Echo um, also, I would recommend. Um, okay, so position, direction, or fascicle arrangement. So where in the body is it? How is it pointed? How are the fascicles arranged and stuff like that? We've got externus or superficialis that is visible at the body surface. So like this, for example, okay? Back muscles, shoulder muscles, neck muscles right here if you're like straining really hard or something like that. Internus or profundus is uh, deeper muscles. So those muscles are typically gonna be underneath superficialis muscles. Extrinsic muscles are muscles that stabilize or position an organ. They're typically found outside of that organ. Um, intrinsic muscles are muscles located entirely within an organ. Now, an example of that would be the organs associated with your hands. You've got extrinsic muscles that are responsible for this motion like this right? Those are all located here and here. Then you've got intrinsic muscles of the hands, which are muscles that are in here that are responsible for fine movement of the hands. So your organ in this particular case would be the hands. And the same thing in the foot. Um, transversus money, uh, muscles run along the long axis, axis of the body. So this way. Oblique muscles run at angles, at a slanted angle, so your uh, external and internal obliques right here in your abdominal area would be an example of that. Rectus muscles um, run along the axis. So let me back up just for a second because I think I just realized I misspoke. Transversus muscles, um, they're going to run across the long axis, so they're going to come this way, at 90 degrees. Okay, so I want to make sure I got that clear. Transversus is going to run across at 90 degrees. Oblique is going to run at angles angles kind of along with the axis and then rectus is going to run with the um the muscle so your rectus abdominis muscles right in here are running with the long axis okay uh, other terms indicating position direction or fascicle arrangement would be anterior external on the outside extrinsic is outside of the structure inferior internal intrinsic lateral medial, uh, which are all words that we have covered already. Some other ones I'm going to go ahead and throw at you. Oblique, which is slanting, posterior, profundus, rectus, superficial, which we've talked about, uh, superior, also talked about, transverse, which is crosswise. Um, uh, structural characteristics, they can also be named. Uh, so we can name a muscle based on its origin and its insertion. The first part of the name is going to indicate the origin. The second part of the name is going to indicate the insertion. For example, is genioglossus, which is a muscle in your mouth. The origin of the genioglossus is your chin. Now, Greek for chin is genio. And so that's the insertion. It, 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 it inserts, so it's anchored here in your chin, right here. And there's these two little spaces that do that. Um, and the insertion, where the action point is, is the back down with the uh, the hyoid bone, and that's where your tongue movement is. Glossus is Greek for tongue. And so here's a picture of that, and you can see right here, here's the insertion point right here in your chin, and then the, I'm sorry, back up. That's the origin, and the insertion is back over here, and so when that muscle contracts, it moves your tongue, okay? And it helps with swallowing and stuff like that. Um, you can also have the, num the number of tendons. So your biceps, for example, you've got biceps, brachii, uh, triceps, brachii is another one. Um, shape and size, you've got trapezius, deltoid, which is a triangle, rhomboid, which is a, a rhombus, um, and other terms that relate to muscle size. Uh, major and minor is a big one that shows up a bunch when it, talking about size. Uh, let's see, nature of the origin, uh, if it has two heads, it's biceps, three heads is triceps, quadriceps is four. Um, what else? The shape, a deltoid muscle, which is a shoulder muscle, is kind of shaped like a triangle. Orbicularis, uh, your eye and your mouth muscles are circles, so orbicularis. Pectinate is comb-like. Piriformis is pear-shaped. Platysma is flat. Pyramidal is pyramid. Um, let's keep going. We've got rhomboid, 
serratus, splenius, teres. We've got a few of those in the legs, I believe. And trapezius. Other structural characteristics, uh, if it's primarily white, it's alba. Brevis is short muscles. Gracilis is slender. Lete is wide. Latissimus is widest. We've got one of those we're going to talk about. Longissimus is longest. Um, longus is long. Magnus is large. Major is larger. Maximus is largest. Minimus is smallest. Minor is smaller. Vastus is great. Uh, we can also talk about it in the action, so the movement, if it's a flexor, if it's an extensor, a pronator, a supinator, that sort of thing. Uh, occupations or habits, so for example, buccinator, which is, um, okay, so if you kind of rub your tongue along the inside of your mouth and sort of press right in the middle part right here, there's a muscle called the buccinator, and the buccinator is responsible for um, moving food to the center of the mouth to aid in swallowing. It's also used if you, um, so initially in infants for suckling, uh, later on as an adult if you're sucking on a popsicle or a straw and you go like that, that's the buccinator, and it's named after um, basically uh, the it's Greek for the movement that you make when you're playing a trumpet, okay? Um, if you watch people playing woodwind, uh, brass instruments or something like that, when you're playing, you kind of go like this. And then you blow. That's the buccinator, okay? Um, uh, other movements, we've got abductor, adductor, depressor, extensor, flexor, le levid... Uh, Le levator, 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 mm. uh, pronator, supinator, the tensor. These are all movements that you've already looked at, so we're going through these pretty quick. Um, uh, other names are uh, buccinator that we talked about, uh, risorius, laughter. So these are the muscles that are responsible for smiling. Um, uh, sartorius is uh, Greek basically for like a tailor. And so that's a muscle we're going to look at that one. It's in your thigh. It sort of wraps around um, the thigh going from uh, lateral to medial. And the name was chosen to reference the how tailors would sit. They would sit cross-legged, um, like crisscross applesauce. That's probably what you grew up with. Um I grew up back in the day, it was called Indian style, and that's not acceptable to say anymore, um, but it's the same sort of thing. So if you remember crisscross applesauce, you can th and you can sit that way, you can think the sartorius muscle, because tailors, and so this is a photo of Seville Row in England, I think, um, and so the tailors would actually sit on the workbench and uh, do their sewing by hand, or they would work the machine or something like that. Uh, and so that's where the name comes from, right? Um, okay, so we can divide up the muscular system similarly, well, pretty much exactly like the um, skeletal system. We've got axial muscles and we've got appendicular muscles. Your axial muscles, 60% of your the muscles in your body are uh, axial muscles. They move the rib cage, they produce, position the head and the vertebral column, and they form the pelvic floor, which is the muscles basically that close in that uh, gap that's formed in your pelvis. Your appendicular muscles are responsible for um, moving and supporting the pectoral girdle and the pelvic gir girdle, and then your limbs that come off of those girdles. Uh, axial muscles we can group based on their location and their function. The We've got the muscles of the head and the neck. We've got the muscles of the vertebral column, the oblique and the rectus muscles in your thorax right here, and then the muscles of the pelvic floor. Now we're going to get into uh, naming some of the muscles here in just a little bit, okay? And so when we get to that point, you'll want to have your study guide handy because 
you're going to be responsible for knowing the muscles on the study guide, not all of the muscles in the body. Okay. Um, so there are definitely some sections of the body we're just going to completely skip. Okay. And then we'll, you know, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So muscles of the head and neck include muscles responsible for facial expression. And those or those originate on the skull muscles of mastication, which move the mandible. This is the mandible is your lower jaw. Remember? And then your, the maxilla is your upper jaw. Uh, the muscles of the tongue, which all the names end in glosses. So that helps. And then the muscles of the pharynx, which begin the swallowing process. And then one of the things we'll talk about when we get to the digestive system is once the process is started, muscle is still involved, but it's smooth muscle. And so now it's no longer, di it's no longer muscle system, it's digestive system. Um, we've got, uh, mus so muscles of the head and neck, we've got in extrinsic eye muscles. So these are muscles that are outside of the eyes that, uh, originate on the surface of the orbit and they control the position of the eyes. So how, where you look and stuff like that. Muscles of the anterior neck. So we're talking about this section right here, control the position of the larynx, depress the mandible and tense the floor of the mouth. So underneath your tongue and support the muscles of the tongue and the pharynx. So some of the muscles of the uh, facial expression include the uh, frontalis muscle. Now, uh, so it's this one right here. And now you may actually hear this as the occipital frontalis, um, depending on what you read. Like in our textbook, it's called the occipital frontalis, but as far as St. Philip's is concerned, it's the frontalis. And so basically that's this part right here uh, that raises and lowers your eyebrows. That's connected to the back part where your occipital bone is by the epicranial ep aponeurosis, which is your scalp right here. So this is all connective tissue. That's why it's so thin. And then you go straight to bone. Okay. We've got the zygomaticus, which is actually uh, two muscles, major and minor. Um, and so here they are right there. Uh, and those uh, are your smiling muscles. Um, your obicularis oculi, which are muscles that encircle the eye cavity right here. So that's those muscles. And those close your eyelids like this. So that's my obicularis oculi muscles in action. Uh, we've got the obicularis oris, which constricts the mouth opening. That's that circular band of muscle right here. And the buccinator which is this deeper muscle right here um, that helps move food across the teeth. The muscles of mastication. Now, mastication is um, chewing. Um, so you can give somebody a hard time. Ah, you're masticating in public. Ah! And they're like, what are you talking about? No, I'm not. And you're... You know, they're eating a sandwich. Um, the, there's two that we're going to be talking about with this one, the temporalis and the masseter. The temporalis is the strongest jaw muscle um, over here. So all of this basically um, superior to your ear. So your temporalis muscle, here's your temple right here, going back this way, is the strongest jaw muscle. Um, and then the... I'm sorry, back up. I have those confused. The masseter, which is actually right here, um, towards it's superficial to the deeper muscles like the buccinator. Um, and then the temporalis helps elevate the mandible, so bring it up. But the actual chewing motion where you're biting down is that masseter muscle. So moving to the anterior neck right here, there's really only one muscle that we're going to talk about, and that is the uh, sternocleidomastoid, which is actually this whole thing right here. And it's got two heads, the sternal head, which attaches to your, which inserts to your sternum, and the clavicular head, which inserts to your clavicle. Um, and this is what turns uh, your head obliquely to the opposite side. And so when this muscle right here, when this side contracts, my head's going to go this way. When this muscle contracts, it's going to go that way. And they work against each other. 
uh, muscles of the vertebral column. Uh, there's an entire group that we're going to talk about, which are known as the erector spinae. Uh, this is a group of muscles. There's superficial muscles and there are deep muscles. And their function is to strengthen the back and allow side to side rotation like this. Okay. You're not going to need to know the specific muscles of the group in here. You just need to know overall um, what the group does, which is straighten the back and uh, side to side rotation. Okay, so the erector spinae group, these are all the ones in your back. They're the ones that attach to all those spinal processes, those protrusions that stick out of the posterior end of the vertebrae. Oh. Okay, moving from the back, moving posteriorly with the spinal column, anteriorly to the uh, thoracic and abdominal cavities, we've got uh, oblique and rectus muscles. Now, they lie within the body cavity wall. The oblique muscles are responsible for compressing and the underlying structures and rotating the vertebral column. The rectus muscles that you find flex the vertebral column and are in opposition to the erector spinae. Some of the oblique muscles in the thoracic region um, include the internal and external intercostal muscles. So these muscles up here, basically, um, where your rib cage is, those uh, aid in breathing. They help the diaphragm in expanding and contracting the rib cage to breathe. We've got the transversus thoracis muscle, which is, runs crosswise to the interior, uh, the posterior surface. Okay, let me back up. It crosses the posterior surface of the sternum. So it runs behind it. It's this muscle right here, and it attaches behind it. Um, we have the, in the abdominal pelvic region, so now we're moving down into this part right here, we have the internal and external obliques, and so that's these muscles here on the side. External lays on the outside right here, and then underneath that are the internal obliques right there. Uh, and those are your rotational muscles. So when you are working out your obliques, you do a lot of activity where you're going like this, right? And you're going like this. Uh, to, so to kind of work those, it's not, yeah, so you'll work those also. Uh, and then the um, transverse abdominis, uh, which runs uh, across. Remember, transverse runs crosswise uh, across. Rectus muscles, you have the rectus abdominis underneath or deep to the um, external and internal obliques. That's this muscle right here. And remember that uh, stabilizes and flexes, okay? Uh, it's between the xiphoid process, so this part right here, and the pubic sisyphus, so it's in between those two bony structures. It's divided longitudinally by a uh, line of tendon called the, lineal, the linea alba, and it's white, so there's the alba, right? And it's divided transversely by tendinous inscriptions, so that's what these things are right here. Finally, we have the diaphragm, which sits underneath that, and that effectively separates the thoracic from the abdominal cavities. And it's the major muscle used in breathing. I think, why don't we pause for just a second, okay? Um, that's the axial skeleton. We'll go ahead and do one more so we can look at the appendicular skeleton, okay? That's the different girdles, right? So go back and review that one, axial muscles. Make sure you're following along on your study guide. And so if you missed any on that study guide, go back and rewatch. If you have a question, let me know. Send me a remind message. Send me an email. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all again soon.